All right, guys, it's just about one in the morning. I got a little bit more work to do, but I wanted to get a message out before this video, a scrappy update is coming right after this. But we got less than a month to give our opinion to the FAA about some of the new rules that have to do with RC aircraft. And if you're not familiar, a lot of you following are, are aviation pilots for full-size aircraft. Some of you are RC pilots. I don't care if you fly a weather balloon <laughs> and a hundred tied together, or if you fly a drone or an RC plane or a jet. We all love things that fly. And we only have a month left to give our opinion to the FAA and here's what I'd like to do. There's a lot of ideas going back and forth about the new regulations coming. If you aren't familiar, I'm gonna put a link on here. I want you to go check it out. I want to make sure your voice is heard and I'm gonna make it easy with a link that steps through how to send a message to the FAA about the new rules. It's also gonna tell you a synopsis with Horizon Hobby is gonna link, I'm gonna to link to their page about these new rules. Basically, and I won't get into a, a lot of the detail, all large aircraft are tracked. It makes sense, we don't wanna hit each other. Drones are starting to go like crazy and pretty soon, it's gonna be really cool. We're gonna have packages show up in our backyard carried by a drone. I actually feel there's a lot of safety in tracking that because there's gonna be hundreds of thousands of them. And tracking it and putting a little more compliance on that, I personally agree with. However, there's a point where they're lumping the small balsa woods, foam, and other things all into that same requirement. And there's a lot of things being proposed and we're almost out of time and we want your help. If you feel like that's over and cumbersome and having to register and have a, an ID for a small aircraft that might be flying around 50 feet off the ground at your local park and you think it's too much or too burdensome, you need to let the FAA know. I don't want to get into a debate about whether it should or shouldn't. I would like to see my son be able to pull out his RC and just go play with it safely, low, in sight, visually, like I did growing up as a kid without worrying about paperwork, fines, legal, tracking, and all kinds of other things. That's just me. I'm not asking you to follow my opinion. I want you to do what you want to do, but here's your last chance. So I'm begging you to click the link. We have a few weeks left. Read up on the new regulations that are proposed. It's all spelled out in the link. And then there's another button, you can click it and you can have your voice heard and type directly to the FAA. Please share this, this video. Everyone you know that has RCs or into aviation, this is our only opportunity to get our word out and we're almost done. So I want to entice and encourage you to do it by giving away cool stuff. <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna give away. Um, Horizon Hobby has made some Carbon Cub RC aircraft. I have some, they're awesome. My son has one, loves it. I'm gonna give away five of them for free and here's how I'm gonna do it. I just wanna promote general aviation, so this is my giveaway this week. If you go click on the link, follow the process and write a letter to the FAA voicing your opinion about the regulations, take a screenshot of that and on the link, it's gonna tell you step-by-step step how to send that screenshot to me. I'd like to see it. Everybody that sends a message to the FAA and sends me that shot, and it's gonna be really simple, I'm gonna throw you in a hat and draw it out and give away five RC aircraft from Horizon Hobby. So this is my way of saying, don't just talk about it, don't just complain online, do something. I'm gonna make it easy. Maybe you can win a free RC aircraft. Spread the word, have your voice heard. Let's keep aviation fun, easy, simple, and safe in a organized way. I hope to hear from your opinion. Let's give away for some free stuff and I'm gonna get back to work. All right guys, sitting on a spool of wire it has nothing to do with airplanes as my chair. I'm starting to lay out my Garmin avionics panel. I am so excited about it. You know, Scrappy of course started out and still is made mostly of all scrap parts. Scrap motor, I'm using two airframes, an EX3 and also a total uh, cub that got bent up in a, in a bad landing and uh, all kinds of spare stuff, spare steel, spare everything. However, 
and carbon fiber. <laughs> it's no scrap carbon. I went crazy with the carbon fiber. The other thing I'm gonna go crazy on that's not scrap parts, I just love an all glass Garmin panel. And <laughs> so we're gonna pretend that that and the carbon has nothing to do with scrappy. <laughs> the rest, scrap parts all over the place. Um, it's still mostly scrap, but when it comes to the panel, I'm going all new glass. So come around here and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm kind of just laying out, I'm just taping in a shape for the panel. And then I built this lower area down here for the panel to connect to. So the panel is gonna carry all the way up like this and arc around, tunnels um, out over my legs and a whole center stack and all glass on the front. So I wanna be able to see my backup camera, my forward taxi camera, all my instrument approaches, all my engine gauges, everything up on a screen at the same time. So that's the goal. <laughs> we'll see if we can do it. We'll see how much glass we can fit in scrappy. <laughs> Not so scrappy on the panel. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Many choices. <laughs> I love Garmin. They make this so easy. They got an app. You can just get online and print out to scale all the different options. We're gonna go see how much glass we can fit in Scrappy. <laughs> the not so Scrappy part of Scrappy. All right, guys. I just figured out why I'm so extra excited today about this part of the build. And it's just loading up this wood and smelling wood i don't know what it is i think it's probably because the grassroots of mine and my twin brother mark's first company had to do with wood we we started really young we learned to work when we were like teeny tiny we're from a family of 13. i mean we had a herd and uh we grew up on powdered eggs powdered milk it was a lot of family to feed and my dad was a sign painter back when you actually hand painted signs on paper for local grocery stores. So we all had to work. We know how to work. We love work. And so for my parents who are still with us, I love you guys. You gave us everything we ever needed and the most love anyone could ever have. So what a, we, had a, we had a great life. Now, my dad went blind at about our 15, 16, 15 year old range. And uh, we needed to help really step up. And that's when we started our first company. And it had to do with wood. We started a company. We had helped my dad build a deck on the back of our house for my oldest sister, Candace's wedding. And we worked together building this deck because we were framers for a house construction company. And we decided that's what we'll do. We'll go build decks. So we knocked doors for a month. We were 15 and looked 12 years old and uh, finally got a job and that was our grassroots was knocking doors and starting to do decks with wood. So I think there's something about the smell of wood that is extra fun for me. So the next day or two, whatever it takes, I get to play with wood, get out the saws, cut everything up and get back to my grassroots of where we started our first company. And so we're gonna turn this wood into about five different parts and then do some bondo work, body work, and then put carbon fiber on it so it's all modernized, lightweight, and then add the most modern, highest tech, all garment glass panel. I'm gonna squeeze whatever I can in it because I love glass. <laughs> so I'm really excited. I think it's because I get to work with what I grew up on. <laughs> Old school woodworking. It is the best, it's my passion. So let's get to work.
<laughs> now to make some arches for my legs, transition, sides, a few more pieces to go. All right, guys, I'm getting close. I'm one, not gonna, well, say not a full day. I had work today, so we didn't get started till late this afternoon. So I had one long evening into it. It's late, <laughs> but this panel is on the fine tuning stage. And uh, I'll show you what it's looking like. I'm really excited. I'm gonna have a lot of glass in here, a lot of Garmin. Thank you, Garmin, this is awesome. All right, guys. Yeah, I don't have someone to hold my camera. Anyway, I had a long day at work, so I couldn't get started uh, till after dark, and I really wanted to finish this mold. You can see it, the front panel area, center console, <laughs> a little bit upside down. Anyway, I wanted to get it done tonight, and uh, Sun hasn't come up yet, so I have succeeded. <laughs> it's kind of the next day, because <laughs> midnight went by a long time ago. But I feel like I beat the sun, and I got the mold done, so it's kind of messy right now. I'm a mess, <laughs> but I'm really happy. The project is just about ready for carbon. I need to do some wax and a few more things, but tomorrow, no problem. I'll get a carbon pulled off it, and we'll be start to finish in two days, so I'm gonna get some sleep. <laughs> Now I'll get back to work. I have so much fun doing the panel layout that I'm just clear taping and I got everything they have to offer. And then I'm gonna just see how much I can squeeze in here because I love it. So let's get to work. All right guys, I'm hiding the panel. <laughs> if when you see this panel, you don't kind of just laugh a little bit because it's a little much <laughs> you're probably a little bit crazy because i certainly am and i'm way excited about it uh, i've gone way over top on my panel and i always plan to from the very very start i want to build something as cheap as i could possibly build it now i'm still going to put in a nice panel i i knew i was going to use a rec frame and another frame and put them together use two sets of frames to build bigger rudders, bigger elevators, I've done that. The whole fuselage, scrap parts everywhere, scrap motor, used components all throughout. Then I got the carbon fiber and, well, that had to be new. And my panel's gotta be new. And Scrappy is a plane I plan on traveling all over with. Primarily Alaska, I'm gonna put it on floats. So I'm gonna be covering thousands and thousands of miles in this plane, so, yeah, my panel's <laughs> a little extra, and I love it. It's all Garmin, I'm a huge fan of Garmin. I've been doing them in all my, doing them in all my aircraft. But I wanted to be able to have a movie playing <laughs> when I'm sitting at high altitude cruising along. I want my charts up, my terrain up, my traffic up, my approach plate, uh, my, my primary screen, my engine instruments all at the same time, <laughs> instead of switching screens. So, <laughs> I'm excited. Here's a little bit extra crazy panel, <laughs> scrappy. <laughs> all right, now that you see it, I'm gonna climb in and I'll show you a few things. So I got the plane tipped up real steep because I'm getting ready to pull these stickers off and uh, lay it carbon fiber. So don't mind all the wood and the Bondo, of course, we know after I do the carbon fiber, all that comes out. So uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I'm set up in here, how it works. I've got the plane tipped really steep because when I lay carbon, it's easier if it's flat. So I kind of rotated the plane for that. But let me get up in here. And 
What's going to be really fun here is my stick is going to be able to move forward and back and pass right over the top of how low I set this. What's great is normally you got to reach pretty far uh, to get to the panel. What's great is on my primary screen, I'll never change it. Um, I'll set it up as the primary flight display. And I mean, I still could, I can reach it no problem. But all the stuff that you're always changing all the time is really close. I mean, I barely will have to reach to do my 750 touch, my autopilot, all my navigation, radio changes. My center screen, I'll likely leave full page engine, all eight cylinders, showing everything on there. These two screens, if I want a full size instrument approach plate up, I am doing full autopilot, full IFR. I can keep approach plate up and my train and my map all at once. So, and then also a backup. So there's a lot going on here. Um, kind of looks like a mess with all the Bondo and wood, but it's gonna turn out awesome, I think. And uh, up here in these areas where I got breakers, a glove box, air vents, and the stand, the backup, um, I, I'll probably do a orange um, aluminum back drop on it. We'll see, that's where I'm leaning towards now. But then the black inlaid into it, carbon edges, and then these areas I'll probably do black so that this stays all black, black, black. And uh, I'll probably do those as carbon fiber inlays into an orange frame. So it's just a highlight of orange to match the orange, black, and silver that I'm doing on the aircraft. So there'll be a lot of carbon showing and uh, I don't know, I got endless options. I can watch uh, Bob's Burgers over here, maybe a little SpongeBob SquarePants. What a brilliant idea. On my way up to Alaska with my buddies. So I'm pumped. <laughs> Let's lay up some carbon fiber and make this look better. Right here, make carbon fiber template patterns, just out of blue tape and clear tape. This is for the panel. We got little patterns for each part. And that goes on that way. So. All right, guys. When you're building a mold like this, you have to think about how you're gonna disassemble it from the start. So I've now pulled the firewall off, pulled the glare shield off. Now I can get this. I didn't bond it so I could pull it back off the backside. And there you can see the mold right there. The part. Anyway, uh, now I'll go to the front, I'll pull the sides. And then everything has a heavy draft. You want to have at least three or more degrees of draft. So as I was building it, doing the Bondo on the edges, and then the shape on the bottom, I made sure I had at least three or more degrees of draft. And then a way to disassemble it and pull the whole thing out as one part. So then I could pull the wood out and uh, get everything out and put it back in and have this be one giant panel that can come in and out of the plane at any time after the plane's finished. So. That's what we've done, but it's gonna take a little work. I'll finish pulling it out. All right, just popped it free, I think. I haven't got it out yet, but the way I've designed it, it's gonna come out with the wood that made this wrap around that protects my leg from having a hard edge to ever hit is all gonna come with it. So this should now come out with the wood I ripped off the back and wood in it, and then we'll disassemble it. But I'm bringing a spare part with me. <laughs> there we go. I got some sanding and trimming to do, but that is pretty cool. <laughs> so I got to disassemble the wood off the back and then we'll weigh it. It's going to actually be a really lightweight panel, but there's a couple things I've done. If you can see here now that I've kind of got it pulled out, I'll trim it, but I've always kind of bothered, it's kind of bothered me a little. It's not a big deal, but conventional panels have a, usually have a glare shield, the side of the plane, and then it goes in and inserts. And then a lot of times there's a little gap where you're screwing the glare shield down and you can kind of see underneath it. Or as the sun warms up the glare shield, you get this little light looking behind here into the panel. 
a little bit of air can transfer through there. So I decided I want to do something different where I molded the sides and the glare shield all into one part, primarily to eliminate any vibration, noises, and get all these gaps sealed up. So now that I've got the entire panel, glare shield wrap edges all one part, there's nothing to rattle or move or shake together. So I've always wanted to try it. We'll see how the rest of it goes, but so far I could be happier. Back to work. Right here, I just painted an area. It's on the back of the panel. It didn't need to be very clean, so I just threw it together real quick. But it's where I got the steel frame, and I can't have any switches or panels in the red zone. So I just painted it on the back so I wouldn't mess that up later when I'm installing the panel switches. All right, guys, so I got the panel turned up. I still need to sand it, but I'm gonna just throw it in the plane and see how it fits. Um, part of the design, the big windows, one piece, was mostly for visibility, but when I was working out the panel, I wanted to see if I could make a panel that I could pull the entire thing, center console and all, just by simply pulling some couple large cannon plugs that disconnect it, so I could build the entire panel all out, out of the aircraft, and then simply lift it in. So obviously it would be heavier with avionics in it, but this is the idea. Tons of room, slide it in. Just like that. So the whole panel can come in and out of the aircraft with everything attached at any time. So I'm really excited about that. I've been trying to design the whole plane the way I've always wanted planes done, which is built for a mechanic or a service or someone who actually works on it. So I could disassemble giant pieces and get to anything I want really easily. So, so far so good. We'll see if we can hold that up and make it all the way to the end that way. That's the goal. So let's go do a few more.